Well, today was the first day it hasn't rained in a while, and time to get out there and get going in the garden. Uh, everything's really kind of soaking wet yet, but the you know using raised beds, everything is uh, starting to dry out quick. You can see the garlic is doing really good. I always put that in in the fall, and there's a little bit of kale coming back that survived through the winter. Uh, it looks like it's going to seed, but a little bit of usable stuff on there for now to you know have some greens. And you can see it's a total mess. Last fall, when it was time to clean it up, I uh, had my cataract surgery, so I couldn't get out there and do anything. So, you know, this, now it's just time to get going. Um, we've had so much rain lately, it's been unbelievable. But the good thing about raised beds is even if you have a mess, it's really easy to deal with. Um, you don't have to worry about dealing with everything at once. Just do a little bit every, you know, every day or two, and uh, eventually it'll all get done. And let's go over and look at the compost pile. Now, this has been uh, sitting here cooking for two years. I, you know, filled it with stuff and uh, just let it uh, kind of rot down and put some more in. And then finally, two years ago, I put a six, eight inches of leaves on top of it. And it's been sitting. And you can see it. It's black gold there. This is the stuff that really makes veggies grow. Just amazing how nice it is. And can't believe the amount of worms in it. It's just... Uh, really good and you know in that bin there it's about six foot diameter and two foot deep i think there's probably about four cubic yards of compost actually it's a little bit over two feet deep so there's plenty of compost for the whole garden this year don't have to buy any and um, everything should do good so i'm just gonna dig it out bucket at a time and put a, a bucket or two in each of the beds as i go along and clean them up Again, you can see it's just beautiful this year. That's my lazy man's way of making compost. And as I turn over a bed and get it ready, I'm just going to put in a bucket, bucket and a half or two buckets of compost, depending on what it needs there, and, you know, rake that in good. So that's, uh, that's poor man's fertilizer right there, and boy, does it work good. So now it's time to just move on to another bed. You know, like I said, a little bit at a time when you've got raised beds. I best thing I ever did was switch to raised beds. If you, you look out in the other section, the garden is still like all mud. It's unbelievable. It'll be weeks till that, you know, is actually dry enough to walk on. So, you know, having to raise beds and I put all the drainage in, in this area really um was worthwhile doing. Glad I did it when I was younger. But Anyhow, let's get some more compost, and you know, I just wanted to show you, this is uh, this is my lazy man's way of making it, and I've done it for years. Um, I do it a bit at a time. Once I get this empty, I'll start filling it up with all the scraps and, you know, weeds and stuff, and start the next batch. I don't think you can get anything that's more powerful than this for, you know, growing veggies. So again, you know, these raised beds are just so easy to care for and, you know, they're so productive with a little bit of compost in them. Um, I definitely, uh, so glad I switched over. So it feels good to finally be outside after a long winter on the couch inside. A little bit muddy out there yet, but, uh, you know, it'll dry up the, over hopefully the next couple of days. And here we go. Let's grab another bed here and turn that over and you can see there you know some clumps in there from the moisture and stuff but starting to dry out really fast now so that's a good thing about raised beds and again more compost in the beds so now this one bed here I'm going to do the shallots uh, every spring I bring out what's left from last fall that we didn't use we always save some for planting some of them will be you know you got to pick through them good some of them will have bad spots in them and be soft and mushy but uh for the most part there are still a lot of good ones left to plant this year shallots um once you once you start you buy your original shallots you never have to buy them again it seems like so i just lay them out around the bed there and once i get about a four inch space and i push them down in the dirt and make sure that little top is up and the, the root side is down when you plant them. That only takes a second to get them in. And we still have some left to use until these grow. 
Now this bed here, it's time to get the spinach in. Actually, it's late for spinach, but it's been so wet, couldn't get out here. So I'm just going to make some rows there, straight rows. Use the stick and the shovel there to make some uh, trout, some grooves to put the uh, seeds in. I really like that little seed caddy that I made. It's so nice having everything out there with you. you just pack up what you want to do for the day and take it out there and you have what you need. And again, these spinach seeds are all seeds that I bought from Baker Creek Seed this year. Yeah, this is that Bloomsdale spinach. I can take a little bit of heat. So just in case it gets uh, warm quick, which I think it's going to do again this year, it won't bolt bolt right away. So I uh, just got to get spinach in. Um, this is nice if you can get it in about February. That's about the best time to put it in around here. But um, just... Everything was still frozen then and uh, just too muddy. So again, just doing these little little rows in the raised beds are, you know, really super easy. And um, should be more than enough spinach in this one bed by the time I get done for the two of us. And having that little caddy, once you get the seeds in, go back and, you know, just put them in there to hold them. And the wind doesn't blow them away and... Pat them down a little bit, and that's it. Hopefully, a couple of days they'll be germinated. We'll see. Really feels good to finally be outside for a day, though. This is like, uh, you know, I did have some time outside with the chainsaw, cutting up trees and stuff, but um, this feels good to be working in the garden. And that little caddy's really worked out good. Happy with it. Now I'm going to. This one bed here in the front, I'm going to put in uh, some of the early radishes. And then behind them, I'm going to put a couple rows of uh, bok choy. This year, I'm trying a little bit bigger bok choy. Usually, I do the baby stuff, but figured I'd uh, go for a little bit bigger one. And again, that little planter really helps with these tiny round seeds that are hard to hold on to and stuff. But... So that's in, and um, then the, the last couple rows over there on the left-hand side, I'm just going to put in a couple new types of lettuce to try. All right, that's uh, still got some energy left, so let's go and do another bed. I'm going to start turning one over for the uh, onions back there. Uh, time to put the Alyssa Craigs in, and... Uh, I figured I'd just, you know, move them back here this year. Amazing, the worms in these beds, uh, they've all come to the top now. It's just thousands of worms in each bed. And this bed here, I'm going to throw a couple buckets of compost in just, just because it's the onions, and I want to try to, you know, grow those two-pound onions again. But there have been some big worms in that compost. That, I bet that will catch a big fish. Look at the size of that thing. So another bed ready to go. Time to run up on the porch and grab the uh, the onions. Now, I started these about two months ago under the grow lights. And they've been out on the porch the last couple of days hardening off. And, oh yeah, there's the boss. She came down to check on me. Make sure I wasn't napping on the bench over there, I guess. So now it's time to get back to work. Everyone, she loves having that cart with batteries in it again. So time to plant these onions and same thing, you know, they, I put them in the little cups to make them easy to plant. So just dig little holes. It's about the right size to, to fit the whole thing down in there. And you just flip them over. You have to be really careful though because you can break the onion plants off very easily. It's just like one little string going to the roots at this point. And then just bury it good with compost there. And they are tender little things right now. But hopefully uh, like last year we'll get some two pounders or three pounders. Whatever we got. We got some really humongous ones. And... Um, actually, they stayed just about all winter. We just had to go out and buy some onions recently. 
They were really, I don't know why they stayed so good this year, but they did. I really look forward to these. Especially with that new Blackstone griddle. Oh, they'll be so good on there. So again, I'm just going to try to space them out about, you know, five, six inches apart and fill this bed up with them. Yeah, for some reason, we've had really good luck. I hope this is another good year with these Alyssa Craigs because they're our favorite onion. They're, uh, they're just as good as a Vidalia to us. Really, really amazing how good they are in flavor. And again, those little cups just make it so easy. They've got enough room for the roots. These things have pretty deep root systems in them, so... You know, there's enough room for the roots to go down and uh, spread out a little bit, too. So, got that first bin of them in. Got to go up and grab some more to uh, finish up. And there it is. That one bed's full. And then tomorrow I'll work on the next bed over. Fill that one up, too, with the rest of them. So, I just wanted to give you an update and show you that finally I got my butt out there and I'm finally doing something and hopefully tomorrow I'll um, you know get some more in and just get another video out I've got uh, new raised beds to try too thanks for watching please subscribe